our, our whole recording history was kind of an accident, a B-side accident. I uh, read in the uh, trade papers that Nick Benet was uh, a new Wunderkind, the first outside producer that Capitol Records was signing. Well, they gave this young guy a shot, and uh, he said, Let's, I think we can make a hit with you guys. He gave me a call and said, Tony, get your guys down here right away because I've got some of the best musicians in Hollywood, Hal Blaine and uh, Glenn Campbell on guitar. So we went in and recorded, and one was a doo-wop song called That's My Desire, an old Frankie Lane remake with a high falsetto, to spend one night with you. Woo. That was going to be a big hit record. Nick took it to Capitol, Voyle Gilmore the next day. We weren't even signed, and he'd use this money and the studio time on us. Thank goodness Boyle liked the tune, and that was going to be our A side. And so uh, they were going to clear the way for the Letterman to come on Capitol. We looked for a B side, and uh, we recorded The Way Looks Tonight, an old standard ballad. It was so slow and so sweet and so uncommercial. Nobody would ever play that in 61. So Capitol made that the B side. And the A side came out, and uh, Got halfway up the charts, uh, disc jockey in Detroit turned the record over and played this beautiful ballad. It was so different and so sincere, I guess, that it made the top five. And that typed the Letterman as a romantic ballad singing group. So for our first album, after that became it, we looked for old standards. It worked once. So the When I Fall in Love was on that first album, another old standard. And so that's how we kind of got into the uh, swing of doing beautiful older ballads, they weren't covers, they were rebakes of 20-year-old records. So we, we can't fight this trend, but let's record the best darn songs we could find. And here we are 50 years later, and that pattern works.